when considering the final product that the Auburn Tigers will put on the field this year, today may be the most important day of the offseason. We'll tell you why on today's Locked On Auburn. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I am, I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. It's a War Report Friday, as Mike G of the War Report. It's been forever. It's almost been three weeks. Yeah, man. Are we beefing? Are we? Uh, some are, we o- are we okay? <laughs> some people think we are. It's funny. People have messaged you. People have messaged me. We're fine. We're fine. Things have just come up. Um, but yeah, no, we're back together on this Friday. And look, this is, you can make the argument this is the most important scrimmage, the most important day as far as, you know, I'm taking recruiting and stuff out of it. As far as creating the product and developing this team and looking at what the depth chart's going to be and the quarterback battle and everything that kind of goes around that, the second scrimmage, Mike G, that is happening Friday is going to determine so many things, or at least be a big part of the building block of what this final depth chart can look like. Obviously, the quarterback battle is where we'll start because it's the most important piece of all of this. But whoever performs the best today, especially if it's TJ, for based on what reports say, is going to be who Auburn's starter is and who trots out there first against Mercer. Yeah, I don't think that, you know, I, they're all, all the scrimmages are important, Zach. Uh, everything that's happened up to this point is important. I think the decisions are going to be made on the totality of everything that's happened to this point. I think a better way to say it is, is that this is your last chance to make up any ground if you're yeah. behind. Right. Right. So like if you were not in the coach's mind, which I'm sure they haven't really shared this with the players and, you know, in leading the race, you know, now's your last chance to make that case for why you should either be the go-to guy or the next guy up. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think you're right. And so, I mean, at some point in fall camp, you switch from, okay, we're in fall camp to, okay, we're focusing on the season. And I'm sure they're going to spend some time focusing on Penn State and Missouri and LSU. Obviously, Mercer and San Jose State are the first two opponents, but you want to use this time to focus on other folks as well. And so, you want to do that with your starters. You don't want to really focus on that and, and waste reps and waste time and practice with, with right. guys that aren't going to be in the game. That, that That's silly and kind of, you know, you want to develop and you want everybody to kind of be on the same page, but you need to make sure the folks that are going to be playing are getting the most reps. And mm-hmm. so um, your thoughts as far as what we should expect to hear regarding the quarterbacks, um, I guess probably later today. Uh, it's going to be a lot of the same. Uh, you know, they are trying to encourage competition. Yep. So you know, a lot of people read way too far into statements that were made about TJ Finley or Robbie Ashford or Zach Calzada early in camp. Uh, I think that they promised that these guys a competition. I think they delivered that uh, in spades that, you know, may have looked one way. There were people had preconceived notions coming into camp about who might be the quarterback. We certainly did. Uh, and a lot, I would say half of everything we were thinking was probably has not panned out the way we thought it would. So that's, that's encouraging to me though. Uh, in a, in a way that's encouraging to me. That means that there's a high level of competition going on into camp. You know, a lot of people freak out if one guy hasn't stood out, but I think that we're just not used to the Auburn fan base isn't used to having more than one guy that can do the job effectively. And when you do in year two of a new coaching staff, you, might have a battle that goes into that first week. But honestly, if I had, I think I expect to hear that TJ Finley is going to be named the starter over the next few days. Um, You've got to, at some point, galvanize the team around whoever the guy is going to be and what that game plan is going to look like. So if it's Robbie Ashford, for whatever reason, sure. uh, You got to name, you got to put it out there and you got to start preparing uh, for week one. Now, strategically speaking, yeah. You can know who your QB is, but not put it out there publicly. But, you know, to not I don't, get, I don't think you could do that. I don't think it matters for Mercer, but like, you know, I mean, it, let's say if we had, if we were playing like Clemson or something first game, it's, I would expect, 
Yeah, I would tell I would expect them to hold that close to the vest so that those guys don't game plan. You have to make two game plans, right? Um, but it is Mercer. So yeah, maybe they put it out there. Maybe they don't. We'll see how this coaching staff chooses to manage it. Do you think the game plans would be that different though? I mean, do you think the games of TJ and Calzada are that different? Obviously, Robbie is a different thing. Robbie, yeah. Um, so you think it's just two game plans? It's like a it would be a Finley slash Calzada and then uh an Ashford game plan? Uh, yeah, correct. I mean, yeah. a, Robbie is the he is the the different cog here. And right. no question. You know, yeah, we released an interview with Donovan Kaufman, and he talked about how defensively the attitude changes when they say they say nines in the game, nines in the game. It changes the way you do everything on defense. Because, yeah, the the approach is different, right? Yeah, yeah, because he can create problems that the other two can't. Uh, you know, uh, Kaufman said one missed assignment, and Robbie's gone ninety yards. Mm -hmm. So. We have to be assignment sound, and you are going to face a quarterback like that or two, man, playing in the SEC, so it's really important. That's why I think that the game plan may be a little different, and it would be foolish not to have one that maximizes what he does well. Sure. So, you know, I said on another show, Zach, that I expect to see packages for Robbie Ashford. I think we see him no less than five or six snaps in this first game. I think this is bare minimum, but expect to see Robbie Ashford inserted into – um, third and goal situations where you can create mismatches and he can do multiple things down there to confuse the defense. Well, the first time you said that, I gave you a hard time. I think you said it two shows in a row, two War Report Wednesdays in a row, and I gave you a hard time on it. As we get closer and closer, I'm like, eh, I still think that number's too high. Yeah, and, sure. you know, may, Maybe in Mercer, they get it. I don't, I don't think he's going to average, you know, six snaps a game in a conference game as far as, you know, unless the second team goes in or something like that. I, I don't think you're going to see I think the number's too high, but I think you nailed it as far as them having a package and actually using it. Yeah, yeah. He's this guy he just creates too many problems for the defense not to use him uh, now. Well, and it also takes up time if you're the opposing defense where it's like, all right, we've got to do a meet. We've got to do a session on, you know, installing, you know, when Robbie goes into the game, you, you, you've got to prep for it. And right. I love that aspect of it. Yeah, definitely. He's he's they've got some talent. We've got talent. I think that the the key here is Auburn has talent uh, at the quarterback position, how they utilize the talent. I'm I'm way more worried about the scheme, actually, than I am the guys who could be running it. I don't, I don't think I've ever been more confident in the set of people hmm. that we have at that position as a whole. Interesting. Having some skill set that we can utilize at a high level. But are the coaches going to scheme this thing right? for the people who are in the game is my bigger concern. Yeah, that I think that's a reasonable concern. There's no question about it. All right, let's talk about other guys that we want to hear their name in a positive way after the scrimmage later today. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is the best place to wager on all of your sports gambling needs. Major League Baseball, pretty much every single day. You can live bet those suckers, or obviously you can do parlays each and every night. It's a ton of fun, all at Bet Online. Also, esports are constantly ongoing, as well as combat sports like UFC, MMA, all of that good stuff that happens all the time. You can find all of that, in, as well as football futures, college football, NFL, whatever it may be. All of it is at Bet Online. It's where the game starts. All right, Mike G, last uh, last scrimmage, we heard Brian Harson praise a bunch of different guys. Um, I think Camden Brown and Damari Austin were like some of the first two guys out of his mouth. I'm kind of expecting to hear those guys again. Obviously, they need to execute, but you know, especially running backs, I I'm expecting to hear more from Jarquez Hunter and Damari Austin in this scrimmage. I think that'll be something that'll be interesting to follow. And then, you know, there really weren't a whole lot of other wide receivers that they mentioned outside of Camden Brown. He talked, you know, he had to be asked about them. He didn't volunteer that in his opening statement. And I think that matters. I think there is a difference there. Yeah. There's a couple of ways you could look at it. Number one, you know, talking about some of the new guys, um, it was encouraging. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, it means anything negative for the guys that are in the room. Uh, but it could mean that the guys who are in there are doing what they need to be doing. And there's not a whole lot to say because there's an expectation now that these guys are going to are doing the things that they need to do rather than, hey, we're surprised that Malcolm Johnson is doing good. No, we know he's supposed to be doing good. So you're not talking about some of the veterans in there because they're just doing what they need to do. Uh, the standouts 
like you said, from the new guys, Camden Brown. Man, he's been a pleasant surprise. That's excitement about an unknown commodity. Sure that we're hearing about. So important for the coach to highlight those things to the fans. I think it creates, um, you know, strategically that message can be used in recruiting, you know, about how you evaluate and develop and give guys chances in camp. So if they're smart, they're using that and saying, Hey, look, our guys, our freshmen, they're getting chances to showcase their talents in camp. Yeah. And then like early in camp, we heard a ton about like JD rim. Um, that sizzle has dropped a little bit, but I think it's just because the focus has been so much on really like the offensive line and the wide receivers because there's so many questions about it. The defense, like it's exciting, big picture, but like when you look at the, you know, these individual position battles, like they're pretty much all set. The only thing is like, okay, what's the market share, right? Like what's the rotation look like? But we pretty much know all the guys are going to be involved there. Like we know that, that Owen Papo and Cam Riley are going to be your main two linebackers, but also Wesley Steiner appears to be a bigger part of the rotation. That's right. Because because coach Harson absolutely loves him. (laughs) Can't stop talking about Wesley Steiner. And then a few days after that happened, they gave Wesley Steiner to the media, which is always a sign of like, Hey, you know, this is a guy that you guys are talking to. Right. So that to me is encouraging, but we still don't know like what that actual rotation is going to look like. Right. We still don't like, we just don't know that. And there's no way we'll know that until, LSU, maybe like several games into it. And so the, you know, just the individuality of the defense position by position, I think they're all just solid. And it's like, we're not going to really know what the market share looks like until, until the season hits. Yeah. Wednesday, we did a cornerback safety preview where we broke down, Hey, who do, who left, who came in and who returned and what do we expect that to look like Uh, at corner? Oh, man, there's so many options, potential options there. It's a really tough room. To- but it seems to be, Mike, it seems to be a very clear pecking order, right? Like it's Jalen and Nehemiah. Mia, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's a drop off there. You know, is Keontae Scott in that second tier? It seems like DJ James is that second tier. Right. Um, we don't really know that, though. But it does, it does seem like there is a clear one and two, which, uh-huh. which I think is good. I will tell you, I think DJ James is going to be a guy that contributes significantly this year based on what his teammates have been saying, what the coaches have been saying about him. The Um, the third corner plays a ton. Sure. If he's a third corner over Keontae, absolutely. And the fourth corner is going to play a good bit. So, yeah, sure. I agree with that. And um, Craig McDonald, uh, we got told a a pretty funny score. You heard about the scoop and score by Craig McDonald in the the scrimmage. Right. Uh, (laughs) Donovan Kaufman shared a funny story with us about we were like, hey, man, you know, what's he looking like from a speed perspective? And, and he made it to the end zone, but but he was he was moving backwards in time for a little bit. He got walked in the open field. Now, this is something the players all give each other crap about. Like, if you get a chance to score, don't get walked. Uh-huh. Uh, when uh, Zacoby McLean in the 2019 Iron Bowl picked that pass off off of the running back's back. That you can't get walked in that situation, or your teammates will never let you live it down. So Craig McDonald is a guy that's uh, getting out there and working hard. Uh, you know, he got a chance. He he took advantage of an opportunity that he got in the scrimmage. Yeah. So they're just multi to my to my to your point. There are just multiple guys there that bring something, and I think that that speaks to the depth that they have in the defensive backfield. And maybe we don't have to worry about a huge drop off if somebody gets hurt during the season right which is good which is good it seems like the starting safeties right now the the most common pairing that we've seen back there has been zion puckett which is not surprising at all and then i think we've seen more caden bridges back there than anybody else Mm, yeah i'm just saying that's what we've seen I mean, yeah, I'm not sure. saying I'm predicting that or anything like that, but it seems like that's what we've seen the most of. I think it's going to be some things that have to be worked out on the field. And sure. uh, Mercer, San Jose say, State to start is a perfect mm. opportunity to do that. So you'll you'll get some guys who go in in the second half of those games and get a chance to showcase you know what they can do. Um, I'm still predicting a couple shutouts for this defense um, okay. in 2022, but those shutouts are going to be predicated about what we have at the two deep. Right. Uh, Because once you get up big in those games, is the second unit going to be able to come in and deliver at a high level enough to keep the other team off the scoreboard? You said a couple of shutouts. So you're saying two, two shutouts, two two shutouts, two shutouts, at least. Right. What Uh, what games are they? Alabama. What's the other one? (laughs) 
<laughs> Maybe I just willed it into existence. Oh, um, almost. It was almost the one last year. Gosh, yeah. Uh, uh, let's let's see here. Um, I I definitely I think Western Kentucky has a hard time getting on the board versus this team. Um, I like the pass rush to be nasty. Right. Um, well, so I'm, I, I'm glad we're playing Western Kentucky this year and not last year. Not last year. Yeah. I mean, listen. Zappy. They, yeah. They, yeah. They were airing it out last year, but because of the turnover there, like, I think that that might be a, a, a game where they have a tough time scoring. And I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at Mercer to start the season, man. A lot of guys are going to get in on defense. These guys are hungry. There's something about a hungry team mm -hmm. that just beware, man. Everyone's going to want to make their mark. So when you get those guys in the game, they're not letting they're not taking their foot off the gas. They're going to get after those quarterbacks. What do you do when you're hungry, Mike G? You eat. You eat. You gotta eat. You got to find eat. something to eat. So no, I love that. I love that for sure. Yeah, the you know how they handle these position battles that they're still trying to get more information on over the first two games. I can't wait to see because like, do you let the guys that are kind of, you know, the second team that you may want to know more information about, like, do you rotate them in with the starters? Do you platoon everybody and want to drop, you know, four touchdowns? Like what? I can't wait to see what the player management side of it looks like in game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Offense and defense are going to be two totally different pieces because Agreed. you may rotate a ton, a ton of guys on defense no matter who you're playing, right, to keep everybody mm -hmm. fresh and to prevent injuries. On offense, though, you need to get information. So early, you can't rotate a bunch of guys until the game gets out of hand. And even then, you might want to leave the starters in a little bit more to get a little bit more information. What I hope to see is, is that they do not miss the opportunity to develop the guys behind the ones and get that information, particularly at quarterback. I think that that's one thing that they didn't do well early last season was uh, when we got up, you know, maybe a drive or two too late, they put the backup in the game to see what that person could do. And those are valuable game reps because if you end up needing that guy, the backup has to be more prepared to step in than we were at that position last year. Do you think with as much that's on the line, if you're Brian Harson, are you that concerned about the backups right now? Or are you more concerned about the starters because there's just a ton of question marks? Uh yeah, you are because you may you because you could find yourself in a position midseason where you're relying on that on those backups to take you through. Now, it's what it, what does that mean? We got reports out of camp that you know Nick Brahms may have suffered. Right you know, an injury uh, that will affect his ability to be able to play this year. Well, already at one of the most important positions on your offense, you've got to have a backup. And it, it could happen early on or it could happen midseason. But ultimately, they're going to have to cultivate now the three deep at that position uh, just in case. So, uh, you know, if we hear of anything else that's happening, we were almost down to our third quarterback by Iron Bowl. If we had had a competent third quarterback, we would have sent a third guy out there before the end of the season. That's you have, I think you, and that tell me that game didn't matter. That win would have changed the complete outlook of this off season. So I think he has to be worried about it because it's the SEC, and if you don't have a plan B, man, you're asking for trouble. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think we're arguing about semantics at this point, though, because like I think in, at some positions, like center. Like Tate Johnson may be your starter, but like he's not really your starter. Like he's your backup, right? Um, and then like Finley, if Finley wins the job, or who it doesn't matter, whoever wins the job, Calzada, Robbie, whoever it is. I, I think you could make the argument the other way that game reps are so important, where it's like I want them in as much that's as fair. possible. You yeah, know what I mean? That's so, fair. And like I think, I think whoever your starter is, like I, I don't think you just assume guys are going to get hurt. Prepare for it, but don't assume it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so like. I don't know. I, I see it the other way. I was like, okay, make Finley as as comfortable as possible. Get Tate Johnson as many reps as possible. Get, you know, your top five or six receivers as, as many reps as possible. I see a lot more value in that, honestly. I don't think they'll do that because it looks trashy when you when you, when you do that. Yeah. Um, but but I, I do think it's worthy of um, of conversation. Like you're trying to run the score up on the other team. Right. right. Well, it's like, no, I'm trying right. to make the team better. Like, sorry, yeah, sorry that results in more points, but like I, I'm doing what's best for my team long term, which I, I think would be easy to explain. But still, you know, I don't. Yeah. Think, I, don't I don't know if that'll happen. I've never been a fan of let the foot off the gas for sportsmanship. Right. Right now. If you're Mercer, you scheduled this game. You understood that a beatdown might be coming. 
take your beat down and go home to Mercer. That's that's the way that should go because when if Robbie Ashford or whoever's the backup gets in the game, those kids deserve a chance to play the game like it matters and not like we just want to take it easy on you, you know, in the name of sportsmanship. You have to get real reps. You know, you have to let him throw the ball. I understand how that may appear to some people, but ultimately until you're inside three minutes and the game is not in doubt at all, everything is fair game. So you're, you're right. There's a couple different ways to look at it. That's why this guy makes $5 million a year. He's got to figure out what the best – <laughs> strategy is you and I are debate it for you know till it's you're blue in the face but ultimately Brian Harson has to figure out right. what's the what's best for his team oh you're right you're right all right let's go through all the position battles that we're watching outside of uh, outside of quarterback in just a moment right here on locked on Auburn thank you so much for making locked on Auburn your first listen every single day it means an absolute ton if you haven't already go ahead and join the locked on Auburn discord it is free all you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below if you're watching on YouTube or check out the show notes if you're listening in podcast form. Mike G, obviously quarterback. We touched on that. Safety, we touched on that. Mm. What other position battles are you really looking at and kind of saying, okay, we may get more information with the second scrimmage? Uh, you know what? Uh, we talked about wide receiver a little bit as well, too. Um, I'm really interested. We haven't, I, I think running back is going to tell us a lot. I think there are some questions after Tank. Now, we have not heard a lot i haven't heard a lot about jarquez hunter mm -mm. this fall camp now he did have a minor surgery uh for a knee thing he's not even wearing a brace though so like yeah, uh, right yeah. Mean, yeah but it's been shockingly quiet around the guy who is widely expected to be you know the second string running back uh well i mean it's, it's been pretty quiet at the running back position all in all with the exception of like damari having a great first scrimmage i mean that's really been the only thing we've actually heard about the running backs yeah it may be one of those things where hey it's going there's nothing they're talking about because it's going great so you're talking about other things other areas that are more of a concern than running back but after jarquez hunter you know one of the debates that's been happening in our comment section is about how much damari austin plays this year or has sean jackson earned the right now we've heard some great things about sean jackson apparently he is a load to tackle complete sure. problem to bring down and they gave they awarded him a scholarship this offseason mm -hmm. uh you know i have been in the camp that i think that we see damari alston but they find a way to preserve his red shirt unless they absolutely need him because you can play up to four games and right. you can preserve his red shirt. So this staff has old school vibes to me when it comes to that. If you don't need him, you got Tank, you got Jarquez, you got Sean Jackson. I don't see burning a whole year of eligibility for Damari Austin and unless he is going to be a significant contributor, which if these guys perform the way that we expect, I, I don't anticipate that. So maybe uh, we learned that what it looks like behind Tank truly, or has Jarquez fallen behind somebody? You know, yeah, are, I'm not getting that vibe. I mean, it certainly could happen. I don't know, but mm -hmm. he's he's consistently with whoever the number two quarterback is. Right. It's consistently. It, it's always been Tank and Jarquez. It's the third one that's changed. It was Sean Jackson mm -hmm. after the first scrimmage that has changed to Damari Austin. Um, but I'm with you, and, and it goes back to the market share conversation. Like we know Wesley Snyder is going to play with a linebacker if he's the third linebacker, but you know what percentage is that? Right. It's similar. At running back, you know, and, and that conversation is even interesting to have with Tank and Jarquez, let alone who the third running back is. But the Sean Jackson situation, I like because he's different than the other two. Like he's more of a bruiser and also a, a bigger guy in pass protection. So I like having that element, you know, kind of being in your running back stable. Damari, right. I think, is similar to Jarquez. And so it's like, when he comes in, like, do you need two of those? Like, sure, you'll take them. But what does that look like when you're rotating in? Like, Shivers was the third running back after he came back from his injury. But it's like he was different. He had a different role than Tank and Jarquette. He was your speed right. guy. So, I don't know. It, it'll be fun to see how they juggle and use all three of those guys and what the, what the percentage is, you know, after Tank. Because I, I think Tank should get 50% of the carries, if not more. Um, it seems like that's what he wants. But after that, like, do you split 25% Jarquez, 25% whoever the third running back is? That doesn't seem right to me. I think Jarquez should get more than that. So, like, right. I, I can't wait to see how it unfolds. 
Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, you, again, cultivating uh, secondary and tertiary options when it comes to every position is going to be super important. So, uh, you know, uh, beside that, I'm, I am looking at that offensive line. Uh, there is a feeling that after this year, we're not going to have much there. So any depth that you can develop the offensive line as well is going to be super important yeah. uh, heading into next season, assuming that they're going to go and attack the portal for a couple of transfers. They're trying to bring in about six linemen in this class out of high school and really start to bolster that position group. They got a long uh, now, way to go. <laughs> they got a yeah, long way to go. Yeah, they do, man. It's, so it's it'll, the lineman, but we'll see. Yeah, that'll be really interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Mike G, how can people find you, hear you, watch you, all that good stuff, buddy? Hey, hit us up at The War Report. Just search The War Report on YouTube. We got lots of great content. We're still dropping interviews. They're still rolling in. Our latest with Donovan Kaufman is up. A uh, great interview with a great young man. If you want to see what this team is going to do, go check that out. Absolutely. Check it all out at The War Report. That's Mike G of The War Report for a War Report Friday. We'll probably have a show up tomorrow recapping the scrimmage. Um, just keep posted. I'll let y'all know. I will let y'all know for sure. We should have plenty of news to talk about. So, yeah, go ahead and expect it. Go ahead and expect it. We'll be back tomorrow right here on Locked on Auburn.